Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. What's up, man? What's going on, peoples out there? It's your boy, Pistol Pete. Welcome to Dog in the Yard. Got my brother, you already know, like always, boxing dice with me. That's right, left to the right. What's going on, my brother, man? How's everything, man? How's everything? I mean, we here, we blessed. You know, today, we got hit in the center of y'all. My brother, you know, uh, most loyal guy that I know. Um, great family guy. I mean, I mean, all I can say is great things about him. Um, yeah. My brother... Billy Blanco from the Bronx, from Cortland Avenue. He did eight years for conspiracy. He was in a major drug bust, you know, a big organization in the Bronx. And um, and he held it down. And he was a young brother at the time, probably one of the youngest, in, uh, you know, that was involved with the crew and all that. So it was a pleasure having him, you know. And um, like I say, you know, he's down, he's down with the team. He repped that set. You already know, we love him over here. You know, that's our brother. And we happy that we... We got to, you know, sit down and vibe. So with that being said, you know. So that, what's good? What's good, P man? What's going on? What's up with the kites, man? What's going on? What kind of kites you got today? Well, man? I got I got three kites, you know, like always. And you know, we definitely got that bonus kite, you know, which is the last yeah, one. The fuego, the fuego kite. You know, so uh the first one is how did Dice got his name, Boxing Dice? That's my first oh, one. Oh man. Man, that's <laughs> a good one there, man. They asked me that. Man, well, Tell you the truth, my brother, I've been fighting since I was eight years old. And when I mean fighting, I mean fighting in the gym. You know what I'm saying? I, I went from the um, from the kick gloves to the Junior Olympics to the Colgate to the Empire State to the Spanish gloves, then to the Golden Gloves, then I turned pro. So I've been boxing all my life just about, man. So that's where the name Boxing Dice came from. You know what I'm saying? That's all I did. And then when I went to prison, that's the same thing I did. Box. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I fought in Green Haven, you know, when they had the gym there. And, and Elmira, you know what I'm saying? Wherever they had a, uh, a boxing um, club, a uh, boxing um, team, I joined the team in, in Sing Sing. I joined the team there, you know what I'm saying? I was always doing my thing, you know, making movies, you know what I'm saying? Doing hey. my thing, left and right, you know? Keep there you go, thing, guys. That's you know? that first kite. There you go. Uh, let's get right to the second kite. They asked me, what's the difference between the state and the feds? Um hey, hey. Well, just to point, just to give it to you roughly real quick, when I was in the state, it's shitty, it's physical, you know, uh, you get hurt physical by the cops, you know, you in there, you fighting, you cutting, police beating you up, either they handcuffing you, jumping you, smacking you, like it's rougher on, you know, in the state, Rikers Island, upstate New York, the same thing, it's all physical. Yeah, and, and, and then, is you know, and then I went from that to the feds, the feds was, I went in there, smooth, you know, what's up? How you doing, sir? You know, handcuffs is okay? You all right? You know, I'm like, yeah, I'm an, MC, I'm an MCC, like, I'm looking around, I'm like, shit, everything was brand new, the cells are new, I'm like, shit, I could lay down and rest and, and sleep this shit, because, you know, I mean, I already know the circumstances that I was in, so it's not like I'm in there stressing about Something new. I already know what was coming. So I'm in the I'm in the bullpen like, and the and the, and the, you got the CEOs coming to me talking about um what you would like to eat for uh, for lunch, and I'm like <laughs> and I'm like what? I'm like for, I would I mean I was like shit. Let me get a sprite. Let me get a a uh, 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 turkey and cheese sandwich. Yeah, they got and, a menu. I mean the shit was different. You know what I'm saying? And them the whole process was different. You know what I'm saying? That's the difference between the state and the feds. You know it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of ball in debt. You know what I'm saying? That we were, we we were vibe on on you know on later on in the future. You know what I'm saying? But that, that's that's basically the you know you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, it's totally different. Those yo, are the, yo Pete, yo Pete, let me tell you something real quick, man. Yeah. When I went to the feds, they snatched me up from Clinton, and you know how Clinton is. That's like guerrilla warfare in that yard, twenty four seven, man. 
You know what I'm saying? From the police to the inmates. It's, it's like crazy, 24-7 in that jail, right? Right, right? And they snatched me up to the feds. I was like, yo, what the hell is this, <laughs> man? They're coming up to my cell. Like you said, um, what you would like to eat? You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo, I'm a vegetarian. They were like, well, they got this thing called Commonwealth, you know what I'm saying? You know, or Common Fair, I think it was called. Yeah. And, you know, you could have this, this, this. I was like, what? Bro, I, I was like, nah, they, they got to be joking with this. And I was in the box. I, I never made a population in the feds. I, they kept me in the box because of my history from the state. You know what I'm saying? They said yeah. I had too much, too much um, extortion and everything. But, yo, only I don't know how dudes were complaining about that shit. That shit was sweet, homie. You know what I'm saying? I go. told dudes, try doing keep lock in the state. Not box time, keep lock. You'll be finished, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, that's my perspective about the state and the fans, man. But if they want to know more, they got to go to patriot.com, man. We'll break it down for them for real. There you go. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's just get straight to that bonus uh, third kite. They keep yeah, asking me. That, they keep asking me my relationship with Boy George. You know, Boy George, my brother, first and foremost. You know, I know George right. for a long time. And I would definitely be glad to tell you my, 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 a little bit of my relationship with him. And um, we'll get with that definitely uh, at the end of my interview on my show. With that That's being right. said, you already know it's Pistol Pete Dog and y'all. My brother Boxing Dice in the building like always. Right, left to the right, baby. <laughs> yeah. Let's get it. Oh, man, I want to just take the time out to thank my guys up there. Jake and Ben for doing an amazing job with this pen. This is that Dom CBD pen. These guys took their time doing this pen. It tastes great. They do them three different flavors, berry, mint, and mango. My favorite is berry, just to let you know, guys. You know, I know a lot of people out there dealing with pain, you know, dealing with anxiety, the way I deal with anxiety. And I'm telling you guys, it works for me. If you want to place your order today, you're more than welcome. You just hit up domecbd.co. Punch in the code, dog in the yard, and you get your 15% off early. So for those people that's out there that's going through it right now and is stressed out in the house, that don't smoke marijuana, trust me, my brothers, this CBD pimp does it all, man. Place your order today, man. It's your boy Pistol Pete, dog in the yard. You already know. All right, you already know what it is, man. Welcome to Dog in the Yard with your boy Pistol Pete. And today's guest, straight from the Bronx, my man Billy Blanco. The eight years for conspiracy in a big case, you know what I mean? That uh, to this day and age, we still talk about it. And, um, you know, he's here with us today. Let's welcome uh, my man Billy from the Bronx, man. You already know. What's up, Billy? How what's you up, been? What's up, Pete? Chill. How's everything, brother, man? Good to see you. First of Likewise, all. Likewise, man. How you been? First of all, I want to tell you congratulations. I see you doing your thing. Thank you. I appreciate you, That's man. That's mad love. Appreciate you, brother. It's, it's your time, and I'm here to support you. And let's let's talk about it. Let's let these, let, yeah. let let them know what it's really about. Let's take that walk. Let's take that walk in the yard. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying. So, um, basically, man, you know, um, how you been, man? I've been chilling, just you know, just trying to get my life together and and move forward. And uh, you know, we come up in a different time, and things are real different these days. And I'm just trying to uh, stay in a positive place, uh, move forward, and kind of uh, we go through the stuff in life. And we were young and, and just trying to fix a lot of my wrongs. Cool. So I want to, now that we're speaking about all that, so like, I want to speak about more or less like, you, you know, how much time, you know, you do eight years, you know, how was that, you know, transition from being a freak, you know, young guy in the world, you know, whether, you know, doing whatever you was doing in the street and going from that, it's your first time ever ever doing a bit, doing ever doing time? Yeah, that was my first bit. I was real young back then, you know, you know, back then it was the wild, wild west. Right. Like, I see a lot of the stuff going on now, um, and it's just real different. Right. Um, just the whole vibe. But, you know, I was, when we went in, I was, uh, I think I was like 18 years old. 18 years old. So when we what went, year was this? This was in, in, in 90. Okay. So I was 18 years old, and and there was such an abundance of money. Okay. Um, that when you're so young, you really don't have... The experience, you know, we all come up in the projects, poor kids, mm -hmm. looking at the fly cars going by, uh, people doing certain things, and you want that. And unfortunately, where we come from, there's not a lot of dads involved. So we had to find our ways in the street. So I wind up getting caught up in, in the street life. You know, okay. I fell in love with it. Okay. And um, so for me, it started 
like I was just out of junior high school. <clears throat> I want to say I was like maybe like 15, 16 years old. Um, What's your background? Were you, were, were, um, were, you, were, you, were you Puerto Rican? I'm Puerto Rican. Uh, came up on Cortland Ave, the Brown Building, 161. If you're from the Bronx, you know what it is there. Um, okay, okay. But, you know, we... Uh, so you got caught, you went to jail for conspiracy? Yes, sir. With a big case? Yeah, we got caught, oh, I got caught up with the Pure Energy. And how many people got arrested? It was 54 of us. 54 people? 54 co-defendants. Wow, did you know all of them? Yeah. So you did all, you, did, you know all the guys? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, what was that like? That was crazy, because again, we were young, <clears throat> and so since we were rolling with so much money and, and making so many moves, you think you a man. Right. And then they come and take everything away from you, and you realize... When you say they, they come and take away the things away from you, who? So when we got busted, it was, it was a joint task force. So it was FBI, ATF, um, TNT, uh, U.S. Marshals. It was a big case. It was a two-year investigation. Um, our case came right after another big case, um, which was the first big case from our, from our, our era, right. which was the Obsession Crew, okay. the Boy George Crew. Um, we were the next crew to go in. Um, so because you have so much money... Right. You feel like you're untouchable. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when they come for you, reality hits. Like you realize, like, it, you know, it's not, it was feds. And it's just a whole different ball game. And no matter how much money you have, whatever they don't take, <clears throat> what they, as far as cash, when they find it, um, if you got bank accounts, they freezing that. If you got family that they think is involved, they freezing them stuff. So they really ma they make it real hard for you to even fight your case. Uh, they make it hard for you just to. So, what was your so what was your, your you know your, your 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 whole feeling with you know going to jail? You was eighteen years old. Yeah. With fifty four cold defenders. So like, I, first time in prison. How was that like? It was scary. Right. I right. you know now I can say it. We have to put up this front. Mm -hmm. You know where we come from. Fear is not an option. Right. You know, it's like the jungle. If, you, if you're if scared, you're going to get eaten up. So, though I was scared, I had a front like it was all good. And, and being so young, I was real naive to a lot of stuff. And you start seeing a lot of stuff. People that you felt like is gangster, people you feel like they hold it down, they wind up, you see the weakness in them. But, you know, I kept my head up, my chest out, and I did what I had to do, but it, it was scary for me. I was a kid, and that's when I realized that I was a kid. Because the whole time, if anybody was saw me, they, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man. But at 19, you really don't know what life is. Mm. So it was, for me, it was real scary. And I had to find ways to hide that for my survival. Right, and how you did that? You know, I, I, chose, my, I chose my moments, you know, where there was in the showers, where there was me telling my cellie to give me some time in my room, in my cell. Uh, you just can't just be out there showing your fears, showing your insecurities. You got to, you know, you got to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got real good at it. I learned how to uh, go through my emotions without showing the masses what it was. I mean, it was just more of a survival thing. I've always been a survivalist, whether it was in the streets, and in, in prison, whatever. I just tried to stay out the way. I uh, do go through whatever I go through, try not to put too much out there where people could take advantage and right. try to take over whatever it is you're trying to do. Okay. So... As far as you, so 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 you was in there so did you copped out to take five? yeah yeah so so with me it was a little different <clears throat> so I had I got fifty four court defendants but what actually helped me was because I uh, I had my own stamps so at that time what do you mean by that you know for those people that don't know what you, exactly what you're talking about so so what happened is so I was in we was uh, selling heroin at that time right and so the the case that was caught up was for the pure energy and for, uh, there was another staff, I forgot the name of it, but the pure energy was right. the main one. So what happened was uh, I uh, was able, I had my own stamp. Right. My, I was doing my own thing and I was, I was fucking with whoever the boss was. Right. Um, so when they raided my house, they found my shit 
I was fortunate where I was a little smart with my money, so I was able to put some money to the side. I always had that that lawyer money. So where a lot of people, we were all making money, but they were not really saving that money. So I always had my attorney money. Okay. So if anything went down, I had private attorney, so I was able to finagle some stuff through my attorney. Um, And so <clears throat> I was able, because of what they found in my house, right. I was able to get severed from my case. So I was originally locked up with the pure energy. Right. But I was severed, so I was separated, and they charged me with what I got caught with and with with, with the stamp with my for. stamp. So that so I was able to plead guilty. So a lot of times um it's tricky when you plead guilty cuz what happens is when you plead guilty, if you got code of fairness that's going to trial, you got to admit to your part and whatever you pleading guilty to. Right. So it's tough because what happens is if you're not se severed, separated, when you pleading guilty, you hurt in a way they use that against the other people. The other people who's going to trial. Mm -hmm. So when I was able to do that, I said, you know, you, it is what it is. I got a good number. The numbers they were throwing at me in the beginning were crazy. So when I got an opportunity, I took mine and I slid off. Okay. And so... Um, so you copped out to what? I copped out to 10 years. Okay. I, on the 10, I wound up doing, I say eight is actually a little bit less. Um, I came home in 97 and, and like and six months. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I, I basically just copped out, took my time. Where you went at? So the first spot, when I, from my co-defendants, I was the first one to get sentenced. And I got a funny story about that, but I was the first one to get sentenced. The first spot they sent me, they sent me out to Kentucky. I went to Ashland, Kentucky. So what happened? What is it that you want to say as far as Nah, you? so it's funny because, so so it's 54 of us, you know, we all young and dumb. Right. So we in there treating it like we in Rikers Island or something. So we in there wilding. So I got a co-defendant, and he probably get mad at me, uh, Little Heck, he, right. weigh, he weigh about 90 pounds with a West Sheepskin. Right. Um, but he was a troublemaker. So... In the beginning, it, nobody really realized, or well, everybody ain't know unless you was from our hood, that it was all of us. So little head get into an argument with somebody, and we wind up having a like a big war with the Africans. Wow. <laughs> and um, so after it was all cleared up, whatever happened happened. We get locked down. They put us in a box because I was the because I already had. I was waiting on sentencing, so instead of me being on a compound, um, waiting for my sentence, they locked me up you know, in the box. I never came out. So the last month before sentencing, they put us all in the box, and they kept me. So I had to go through transit. What's the box? What's the what, what the is box the, is the hole? So Rikers Island, they call it the the shoe, right? No, it's the hole. It's the hole. The hole. Up the north, hole. they call it ASA shoe, special housing. Yeah. Unit. So it's a, it's a jail inside the jail. Right. And and you there twenty. 20, 23, 23 hour lockdown Break it down They give you one hour And they come at fucking 4 o'clock in the morning You wanna go outside At 4 o'clock in the morning You fucking Yeah you like you fuck So you pretty much They tell you 23 hour lockdown Because it's the law But they keep you locked down For 24 hours Okay So um, Then I get shipped out I get shipped out And When you come out When you going through transit um, And you coming out the box it's a little different. They treat you know, it's like even the 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 shackles and all that. Where how can I explain it? The shackles is like is the uh, uh, handcuffs, but you can move it and the chain and they you know wrap it around your stomach and all that and your feet. When you in the box, they got this special. Sh it's like a fucking. It's a handcuff, but it's not. It's like a box. It's like a box, like a black box. And yeah, and you can't move your hands, so like you're stuck. It's the worst and. Even when I got to the spot where I was at, I had to go see the, the I had to go to the whole court. At the new spot, I ain't even been there and I still had to go straight to the, to the box because I left from the box. Wow. So it's just crazy that, you know, they fuck with your head. 
Yeah, it was a mental thing. It's it was a mental thing. You know, they they fucking like when I was going from at one point I was I was leaving from so I was in MCC back then. They, I don't know if they still do it, but it was MCC and Otisville upstate. And what they did was if you didn't have after you saw court, they would send you to Otisville, and the day before court they would bring you down to um, MCC. You go to court, depending if you have more courts and, you know, soon they keep you there. If not, they ship you back out. So it, it's just they 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 want to keep you moving. They don't want you to get comfortable. They try to fuck with you. There's a lot of psychological warfare in there. Like, even, like, with my co-defendants, like, we was walking in, and with, with the severity of our case at that time, that was the second biggest case that came out of the out of the Bronx, I think out of New York City. You know, there were some other cases out of Brooklyn, but um, from the Bronx, it was the second biggest case that I went in. Right. And um, at that point, and they, uh, we went in, we ain't do nothing, we just got there and they was just locking us up. And they was trying to get motherfuckers to flip from the door. When you say flip, what you mean? Snitch, okay. from the door. Like when I first went in, they. I'm walking in, they're like, 50 years, 50 years. I'm like, what the fuck, 50 years for what? They started comparing us at that time. So I'm going back. But at that time, that's when there was some shit going on with Saddam Hussein. Right. And they started comparing the organization to what was happening with Saddam Hussein out there. They were saying that we was just like terrorists and stuff like that. They was really going in on us. And keep in mind, there was nobody older than 25. Mm. And every, everybody was like everybody 18. Was a young man. Like we, were, we were kids. We were yeah. boys. Like, like Pete, where we at right now, at yeah. the age, where we think and stuff like that, we were kids Right. At back then. We thought we were grown. Of course. Um, you, you, we doing grown folk thing, but we were kids. And, and they were really, they really fuck with your head. Like, they really... So when you went to another... To, to, so when you left M MCC... So I went from MCC, so I went through transit. So so they sent, they, they from MCC, I went to Otisville. Otisville, I got locked up in the box. From okay, then, how, how long you was in Otisville? I was in Otisville, so I was I was fighting, I was going back and forth to court for about a year and a, about a year and a half. Okay. Year, year and a half, more or less. And um. So when you got sentenced, when you went? So I, I wound up in Ashland, Kentucky. Okay. But they put me on a plane to Texas. Then from Texas, they put me on a bus and drove back. I only remember. And then from there, took another plane back to New York. And then in New York, put me on a bus to Kentucky. So they was just like, just fucking with me. Okay. Um, obviously, I'm, 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 a, I'm a young kid from the Bronx. First know, time in jail. First time in jail. So you were you was you was confused as hell. You yeah, at that at that time, at that time, ten years, I'm like, what the fuck? My life is over. Right. You know. Then I realized how I got, how lucky I got. Right. After it's all said and done, like I got, like all my court offenders, we all home. But when all, the, of them? all fifty four, all fifty four of us, it, 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 it was it was more of us. Okay. But I don't count the rats. Okay. So. Um, and that was something that even when we went in, when when I when you know people step to you like yo where you from what case you in you got to show your paperwork. So, so, so when you went to the other to the, to the new jail, the Puerto Rican stepped to me right away. And what was that like? Like um, they had you know there was so there was this one kid I'm trying to remember his name. His name was I want to say Tomas. I think that was his name. We're going way back, and um, he was like. The representative of the Puerto Ricans, or oh, there wasn't a lot of us. Okay. Um. He had a bag, so they already knew. So I was there already like two weeks before I came on the compound because I had to go still deal with the the shit that happened in Otisville from the fight. Let Let me cut you off right there for a second. So before you went, before you went up, did you got sentenced? I got sentenced. Was it your wife pregnant? You telling me? Yeah. So, so my daughter. Uh, when when I got locked up, she she was my the the her mom was. 
what is it, nine months before they gave birth? Yeah, yeah. So she was eight months pregnant. Right. We were on, I was on a visit at MCC. She gave birth. In the feds. Well, I was, she was in a visit. They yeah, threw her out the visit. In the, the feds. feds. She was in, and what was that? Fucking so it's right nine, it's nine, in my head. What is it, nine north? And nine, nine north, nine south? Yeah. Nine north. That's what they got, nine north. And nine yeah, south. and I was on a visit. She, go on, she started going to labor. And, you know, so we tell the CEO, they was like, Yo, you got to get out, you got to get out, you got to get out. They, they took me, threw me back inside. She had to get out. But my, my, my daughter was almost born in MCC in the visiting room. Wow, amazing. How so, that would... That was crazy. It was, he was you know, just nervous and scared. I like, was scared. I, then I mean, I couldn't get no information. Yeah, obviously, they just um, took you away. They took me away. Um, they said they, I had to wait for a call from from out there because I couldn't call the hospital. Right. Because in the feds, it's not like to stay. I think they they got like phones or they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you might like, take you back to the unit. You just get on the phone. Yeah, you 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 got to go to the fuck is collect. Right. There's only collect calls. At, at that point. In the first. Now it changed. I think now you can put money or something. Right. But there's no free phones. That shit right. don't exist. So, so I couldn't call nobody. Mm. I can't call the hospital collect. Can't call my family. So she out there giving birth. Giving birth. you know. I ain't know till like, like 24 hours later that I had a boy or girl. Okay. So that had me stressed. Um, and they ain't helpful. They don't give a fuck about you. So I would go to the counselor, yo, I need to make a call, but I had nowhere to call. At that time, like no not, information. So that everybody got cell phones now. Right. It was no, but it was, it was more stressful for you because she's out there. So what 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 whatever happened to her? Like what did she's did? good. So so she she you know she went and gave birth. Um, not at the jail though. Not at the jail. She they they got her to the hospital. Um, she gave birth. My daughter, God bless her. You know she's she she uh. Considering where she came from, I'm very proud of her. She actually, uh, she's a probation officer. Okay. Yeah, my daughter's a probation officer today. And it's crazy because when she was going through the process, I was apologizing to her a lot because they do a, a extensive background search on her. And I just felt like it would have hurt me if because things that I did when I was a kid would have affected her now her as career. an adult. Um, but I told her, you know, just... Keep it real. Keep it. Be honest with it. Don't lie about anything. This is what it is. Right. You know, I was young. So she's good. She's good. So she, you know, she, she's she, good. Your wife gave birth. Now she's a. Now your daughter's yeah. as, as a. As and a now my daughter officer. carry around a gun. You know, okay, like that's all I told her to be fair. So now let me ask you. So now going back to to when you was doing time though. So so you did time in one whole jail. You did the whole ten years. Nah, whole, nah, like, what? nah. So my, you know, as, as for, when you first go in, you you had a certain level as far as they consider it the severity of your case. So they sent me to Kentucky, to Ashland, Kentucky. At that time, that was a medium high. Okay. Um, so I, Medium high, meaning what that means. So you got, the, so you got the, the levels. So you got like the penitentiary, and I think there's one above the penitentiary, then penitentiary, then the medium highs, medium, medium low, low, and camp. Okay. So in the beginning, they put you in, um, depending on your case, because they don't know nothing about you. So it's really based on your case. Um, and that was my first time locked up, so I ain't have no jail history. So because of my case, and they wind up shipping me out, trying to fuck with my head, mm. let my co-defendants know what it is, there's niggas out there trying to scare. They still, they now they, you know, they use me as a pawn, try to scare other motherfuckers to tell. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's just like, a, it's a game of chess. It's a game of chess. And So um, you in there like... So I was the first one out there. So when I was in New York, I no matter what, I had 54 motherfuckers with me that if nobody else fuck with me, my niggas is going to fuck with me. So you feel a certain type of... Um, you feel safe. Right. Like no matter no matter whether I was at MCC or Oldersville, which is the But two now you're on the other side of the world. Now I'm on the other side of the world. So First that, one out. So how nobody that? know me. My case is still going. And you know, you get the you get the side eye. Motherfuckers is looking at you like, huh? There's nobody there to vouch for me. Um, so pretty much back to what I was saying, so I come out the box, Puerto Rican stepped to me. Okay. They got a bag for me. 
a care package. Um, so when you go up, you got your paperwork. First thing they say, you know, they ask me where I'm from, how much time, you know, ask the basic questions. Mm -hmm. You got your paperwork. Right. Just my paperwork. Mm. It was all all clear. Then um, they uh, give you a care package. You know, this for you. Simple shit. Soaps, deodorant, cosmetics, shit like that. And they tell you, like, this is what we do for our people when they're coming through if they're straight. Everybody, and, and at one point, once I settled in, you know, you go to the yard, and you know, you meet everybody. Um, the person who stepped to me, and when I say stepped to me, not stepped to me like, because I ain't no bitch ass nigga either, but stepped to me like just on some trying to find out what's going on. We fuck it, they fucking with me, they not fucking with me. Once everything came out clean, when we go to commissary, if you're good, yo, here's a bar of soap. So whoever coming through behind me, right. we have that bag. So it wasn't like a... So they had a little system going yeah, on. Yeah, we had a system. Every every For the most part, the Italians did that. They find out, look out. Um, as far as the races were concerned, um, they did. Everybody, there was one person who kind of collect. Um, and it was for... Not for the person who's collecting. It wasn't none of that. But like back then, stamps. Right. You're trying to, you know, write to your family. You ain't got your money. When you first get there, you don't you don't have no money. You don't got your property. Everything is So you always getting a little care package. A little care package, you know, so so I was down with that. You know, right. like I did that throughout my bid, like wherever so, I was at. So so that's the job that you did the whole time, right? No, no. That was the first spot I went to. Okay, so how long you was there for? So I was there, I want to say, like a year and a half, two years. And so then what happened with you? So, you know, you're trying to get closer to the home. So as long as you ain't getting in infractions, getting in trouble, you put transfers in. I think it's every six months you got to get a chance to transfer close to the home. Right. Uh, it took me like two years to get transferred close to the home. And then from there, I want to say I got transferred to another meet. Uh, medium high to school kill okay in pennsylvania so yeah, that was school closer kill. i was there yeah so school so kill. so it's a little bit closer obviously than fucking a plane ride hell yeah it's still far as a motherfucker yeah, but, but ain't no plane ride yeah, you can drive there at least you could drive there you yeah. can drive there so I, I was a school kill for a while by that time my case was already done so when i got to school kill i already had code offenders there that received me, so I ain't, you know, like I had like like four or five of my co-defendants because there was so many of us. At that point, whatever prison you went to, you, I was gonna bump into some of my people for my case. Right. So so that was good. It was good to be around people. Um, even not for my case, bumped into like fellas from the from the hood. Yeah, you know? other guys. That was by there. that time, like I'm already two years in. Right. By that time, unfortunately, people, you know, there was one case in front of us. One case, then us, then it was like three or other big f cases. Even your, you know, like, like you know, so so you start bumping into people and uh, you're more familiar with, um, understand where you're coming from. Um, even even at one point, people that you weren't so cool with, but y'all was from the same hood. So whatever happened in the streets, I mean, unless it was something crazy, for the most part. Um, you embrace each other because y'all y'all came from the same struggle, um, and you put a lot of this. You know, you talk about it, and a lot of the shit that maybe if you had beef in the street, and here is us like we doing this, right? And so it was different once I got back to the East Coast. So you was in school. So you was in school kill. You went home from school kill. Nah, then from school kill. So you know you make the little stops. So through for me through transit, um, I touched um, Lewisburg. I touched Atlanta. Uh, Petersburg. To transit. To, to, to transit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then from school kill, I was there for like three or four years. Then I finally, they opened up Fort Dix. Okay. And that shit, so I got in there. So I came home from Fort Dix. Okay. And when I got there, that shit was like, so we from the PJs. So you take a projects and you cut them to three floors and put a fence around it, that's Fort Dix. That shit was like, I was like, oh shit, I'm free. Like this this is I'm home. Um, it was like a 
hour and a half, what is it, from, from the, it's by Great Adventures. So yeah. if you're in the Bronx, you know, you're doing Great Adventures all the time. So it's just one exit away from Great Adventures or two exits. So, I, you know, now you're getting the, the, the visits on the regular. At that point, my level had dropped. Because I was chilling, P, like for the most part, you know, motherfuckers come, come home and like, yeah, I ran my house, I did this. I ran me. Mm. Um, I did my time a little different for maybe other other cats. You're gonna interview a lot of people, and and um, I, I learned this that if a motherfucker come home talking about I ran this, I ran that, it's probably a lie. Because mm. the motherfuckers who was really making noise, <laughs> they ain't saying shit. They talk. They being talked about. Ain't nobody. They ain't gotta talk. For example, mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You ain't you ain't never tell me I did this, I did that. I know. Because mm -hmm. motherfuckers was talking for you. Because yeah. you was making noise. Mm -hmm. I did my time a little bit different. You know what I mean? Like I uh um but even in the street, I was my philosophy was um I was trying to make money, I wasn't really trying to beef. But if you came to me, I'm gonna defend myself and I'm gonna do what I gotta do. I went into deal with that mentality. Like to you, I'm on my business. I don't gamble. I don't get high. Um, I don't fuck with the gumps. Uh, the who? The gumps. What is that? That's the the, the homos. Okay. Um, no offense to them. You know, do your thing. Um, so for me, it was just a matter of doing your time. Doing my time. You respect me. I respect you. Right. Um, if you got, if we get into beef, I don't do the. We got beef and it's over. We got beef for the rest of our bed. Right, I got ten years to do. You got ten years to do. You really want to do that? Everywhere we see each other is on site. Like that's whack. So um, I already had enough stress. Right. So for me, I, I, I always, I always like even before I went in. I like to believe that people understood that. Like I'm like if you if you go at him, he's gonna come at you. Yeah, you're not gonna not pussy. You're I'm not, not gonna, no, no, you're no. not gonna you just back down. You're gonna I ain't defend gonna fall yourself. Back. But they also understood if you respect, he's gonna respect you, respect him. Mm -hmm. So I, I always had a mutual respect for everybody. Mm -hmm. Even, even it's funny. Like, like I'm here with you now, and you my brother. Like, mad love. But back in the days, Cyprus, mm -hmm. Cortland, that shit was like, oh, you're in vinegar. Mm -hmm. Um, but I never had beef with anybody. Your right. brother, Marv, my compai. Right. Um, you know. So you had that same mentality when you went to school, uh, to uh, Four Dicks, you was just chilling. Yeah, I was just chilling. Like, I was just doing my time. Like, I felt like. So the, what What? What are the things that you can remember that happened for you or you seen when you was in, in, in any of the, the time that you did, you know, that you can remember <laughs> stuff like that, you know um, what I'm saying? Or even. You know, it could be either, you know, something that, that you was like, wow, I'll never forget. This I mean, happened. one of the things that I saw, so, so in the, so in the, so let me, so, so the feds, and you know, you, you, you did fed time, so you understand this. So you got the DC, right? Right. There's no, there's no state jails there. Mm -hmm. So if you rob a purse and you get caught in DC, you go to the feds. Right. So they was doing eight months, six months a year. They wasn't bidding. Right. They, they wasn't were, getting a lot of time. They wasn't getting a lot of time. So they was in there wilding. Right. And so so even with my 10 years, you're going to, I'm sure that you're going to have a lot of people on the show that my 10 years, niggas was like, yo, I wish I had 10 years. The numbers is crazy in there. Right. They don't play. It's football numbers. I have baseball numbers. Right. There's football numbers in there. And so, but when you come in there with a year, you know, I got my days where I'm, you know, you, I'm stressed the fuck out. And I wake up, ain't nobody doing You know, I want to fight. I want to I wanna get some aggression off. And so, you know, I have my days okay. where I flip. But like the DC dudes, they were doing skip bids. And... So they were wilding. So it was always beef. DC always had beef with everybody. Right. You know, one like I've been out compound, DC against New York, DC against the Cubans, DC against the Dominicans, DC. 
Yeah. Because they was doing a different type of bit. Right. And so, and it was a different type of mentality. Right. You know, when you're doing a big numbers, and again, my 10 was nothing compared to someone like, I was like the one motherfuckers. Yeah, but you're not trying to catch no more time. You're not trying to, so so they in there doing these little bids, wilding, so they think it's and once in a while you gotta, you, you know what, it is what it is, and you gotta you know do what you gotta do. And let go. And let go. And what happens is you, it's easier to get caught up because what happens is now you caught, you know, you're gonna handle it a certain way. You got people around you just gonna handle it a certain way. And that shit just becomes a big mess. And this motherfucker go home in, in two in three months. Right. He wasn't doing a year. So you so 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 what you seen, I mean, that you get So so time? so them and and they were real big with the gumps. Okay. And so you always hear, you know, like even in the movies where, oh, niggas is getting raped, and niggas getting raped. So, ah, niggas, so many, there's enough homos in here giving up the ass. Why niggas want to take it? But um, in Kentucky, so there was a, over there, you know, you got, you got the whites, you got the blacks, you got the Puerto Ricans, you got the Chinese, you got the Italians. Everybody stick to themselves. With me, it was a little different because I'm from New York and a lot of the Puerto Ricans that were there were from Puerto Rico. So I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm from from over here, so it's a little different. From so New York, for me, it's different. I'm yeah. from New York, so I'm a New Yorkican. Right. According to them, like I was a chapiao. Well, that's what they call right. us, the chapiaos. So for me, I rolled a lot. I, I, I fuck with a lot of the Morenos. Right. On some New York shit. Right. Like you from New York, Brooklyn, Bronx, whatever. I mean, we out here in Kentucky, we gotta look out for each other. So I got I caught some flack for that, but I ain't give a fuck. Right. Um. But some kids from Detroit, from they 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 bugged out too. So this little white boy comes in. I never forget this. He came in, weighed about hundred pounds. Right. First time in jail. The white boys go to him, but it was like the Aryan Nation dudes. Right. So they kind of you know, tattoo like looking crazy. Mm -hmm. So I guess he got scared, and. He started hanging out with the Morenos from Michigan. From Michigan, they put him to sleep. You know, ah, yeah, looked out for him, took care of him. And I never forget we chilling. So you know, on on the weekends they give you what's called late night. You can watch TV a little later, right? And so we, I'm just chilling on the, on the on the tier, just looking. And they fucking. Raping the little nigga, nigga come out running, bloodied up and all that. Like they try to hurt him. I'm like, oh shit, this shit really happened. That shit really was like an eye opener for me. Not cause I've like I'm a I'm a street dude, so that shit ain't gonna happen to me. Like we're gonna we're gonna go, but that showed me you gotta really pick and choose mm. who you're around. Cause the dudes that did it to him were cool. I would never think they would do that. Right. And they put him to sleep, you know. It took about a like a month into it. I mean, put him to sleep, meaning what? Like, you know, they was looking out for him. I got you, and nobody nobody fucked with him. They wifed him, and he didn't even know it. He was wifey. He became a wifey. And um, so that was certain. That was the the, the only time I saw that. Cause again, wow. that was yeah, crazy, that was though. crazy. Um, uh, just a, a lot of different shit. Uh, yeah, but that's crazy. He was bleeding and all that. Yeah, they that. cut him up. Like he was trying to fight, but you know it was, it was some big motherfuckers, and and they 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 got the best of him. Yeah, they got the best of him. Hmm. Um, That's crazy, man. And that was one of those times where it made me think, like, well, I had to take a look and see who I'm fucking with. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. not in those, not in that situation, but anything else. Like, yeah, it open your eyes. This motherfucker might try to come at me, like, hmm. so, like uh, some other shit. Right. Like, so I'm trying to flip or whatever. Yeah. And um. So that was one of the experiences. And another thing is, it's kind of funny. Is I laugh about it now. And I don't know why I got so mad, but there was this one kid. So when I'm going through transit, started my bit, first time ever locked up. So I want to say, as you go and you pick up and drop off people, you stay for a couple of days in different right. spots. Um, and then there was this one spot, and I kept seeing this, this Moreno, big Moreno, about about six feet, mad cool, from Ohio. 
He wanted to be from Ohio. We got cool. And I, I tell I tell the story all the time now. Come on, and motherfuckers be laughing out about it. But kid name was Mike. Right. And so we probably I noticed him around I think he was leaving Lewisburg. Okay. So we get on a bus. I don't even know where they took us next. Stay there for a couple of days. They call me again. The Moreno's there. I'm like, who the fuck is this nigga? So at, one, at some point, we already had the, like two or three stops already on the mm. way to Kentucky. We don't know. you Now, that's another thing. You don't know where you're going. So you can't even call your family and be like, yo, I'm coming over here. They got to wait. When so I get, get there, there. till you get there. It took about a month. Mm. So me and, during the meantime, me and his kid Mike, man, cool. Right. We get to Kentucky, like, oh, shit, we here. So now I know somebody. He came out before me because he was regular. And though I'm I'm in the same bus with everybody, they got me in a different section, me and a couple other cats, whoever was in the box. Right. Finally, so we get to Ashland. They put me in the box. He goes to the compound. About a week, maybe... No more than 10 days, I come out the box. They put me in my house. Who oh, I see the kid, I'm like, yo, what's up, Mike? So we chilling. So he ain't have nothing. That's the one thing the Morenos ain't look out for each other. Unfortunately, that's what it is. I had, he was like, yo, how you got soap? How you got this? I'm like, yo, my people's looked out for me. Right. So I was like, yeah, I got you. Don't worry. Like, I had a couple of deodorant here. He's a deodorant. Looked out for him. Maybe like two or three months, we, we was chilling. I ain't know nobody. Was he really trying to fuck with too many people? Still trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Right. Remember, this is my first bit. I never been locked up. I only did one bit in my life. People. Okay. So before lockdown, we used to always be in a tier. His cell wanted to be next to my cell. Right. It was cool. This motherfucker, like, yo, you gonna you gonna um you gonna chill in the morning? He was like, yeah, alright. So we locked down. I come out in the morning. Think child was with breakfast like five o'clock in the morning. Right. So I'm like, I come out of yo, Mike, where you at? Mike, where you at? This motherfucker come out. <laughs> Told about don't call me Mike no more. Call me Michelle. <laughs> Y'all was like, yo, what the fuck are you talking about? Yo, Pete, I flipped. He never, he never disrespected me, never tried to come at me. But I felt like, nigga, this whole time, now you coming out, niggas are gonna think that I fuck with you. Wow. And for me, at that point, that's crazy. It mattered to me. Yeah. I ain't gonna front. Mm-hmm. It mattered to me, like, nigga, I'm because yeah, everybody looking at you like, yo, they what's see up? me and this nigga running up and down. That's all I need, nigga. Be like, yo, this nigga is fucking with the gumps. So I'm not, you know. So again, I'm 19 years old. I, I wasn't mature enough to be like, ah, that do you, nigga? I'm good. I can't fuck with you no more. We not hanging no more. Right. But do you? God bless you. Be yourself. Be all you can be. Um. So that was a little bit weird for me. That's a, uh, that's one of my funny stories. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, though, that he came out just like that. And he was like, don't call me Mike, no more, call on, me Michelle. What happened to him? Did he, did he just remain like that? Yeah, he he, he wound up he, <laughs> he wound up being somebody's girl in there. Like, that's what he was. He was front, he was like, yo. And and we wind up... Yeah, you spoke to him until... Afterwards. Him. It took about a month. But I but then, and the argument, because I, re- I was ready to flip on him. Right, Pete. When I tell you, he never violated me. No disrespect. He ain't never say nothing to me out of line. Like you know, like if you went to that, he ain't had no clue. He was like that. He wasn't like no tough. So then, what he told you? So you he was remember, like, "Why you? You, you know, him? why are you so mad? Like I never disrespected you." He was telling me that, like, you know, like I never. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Like why are you coming at me? Like, like why that? Are you mad? Because I was ready to flip on him. Right. And I was like, motherfucker sees me, sees me walking up and down with you. They gonna think I'm fucking with you. Like, again, it was a lot of immaturity. Like, but that was my first experience yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with the gumps. Yeah, you was like, what the fuck? I was like, this? oh my God, this is all I need, my people to find. Like, I was still, it was still important to me. How anybody how else? How anybody feel. else thought about it? Of course, me. you didn't want to, you didn't want to, I feel you. So let me. It, it didn't matter that mm. at the end, right. yo, he was a, a good dude. Right. It was more important to me. My well, image. Yeah, what, what'll what get back to the neighborhood. Yeah, like, I was like... I feel you. It, it, it took me a minute, you know, but uh, afterwards, I I apologized to him. Okay. Um, After I thought about it, uh, 
I was more settled in now. Cause remember, this is I'm just new on the compound. So, Billy, uh, 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 let me ask you something. What you think about uh, 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 prison reform? Man, I say this, Pete. I got lucky. When I came home, you know, I looked out for a lot of people before I went in. I like I even had the young, the younger dudes. They would come to me because you know we was doing good. Yo, I want to get down. I want to get down, and I just felt like I knew everything I was going through. And though I made an abundance of money, I was chilling. Like I was fifth. I bought my first Benz when I was fifteen years old. I didn't even have a license. Okay, I went so, and bought a Benz. So, so. so I kept the, the the youngsters off. Right. And I used to, you know, you you want what you want. Here's here's some money. Go shopping. Fuck out of here. Right. Um. And so I was able to do that. I was in a position where I was able to do that and help out the youngsters. Then I went in. Now when I come out, those youngsters that I was looking out for are men with families and working. And so I was one of the fortunate ones that I came home. And two months after I came home, people looked out for me and got me a job, a good paying job, a union job, um, where I was able to support myself and my family. So this is what you're doing now since you've been home. I still, yeah, I still been doing. It. I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm almost ready to retire. I got over 25. Well, not over 25. I, I, I got almost 25. Like I'm like around 23 years in my union now. I could retire after 25. I ain't got the age yet, but um, I got lucky. But I, I see a lot of good dudes. How long have you been doing it? Yeah, I've been in a hotel for for like 20, 23 years. Good. But if I hadn't done that, the the prison ain't do nothing for me. Right. The same way I went in, I came out. I went in with limited education, my GED, and I started some college. Cause I was trying to fix myself. Right. Of course. Um, but then they transfer you. Every 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 facility, every every prison don't got the college. So you got no school going. Um, so you get caught up, and that's how motherfuckers get caught up in that cycle. Right. P at the end, I always, again, I started this with, you know, I'm, I survive. I'm a survivalist. And if that means, I'm going to feed my family right. by any, any means necessary. I got lucky that I got an opportunity. Somebody remembers something I did for them back then. And, and plug me in. And put you in. You know. So you've been blessed as you've been home working hard. Yeah, I'm and, working. And doing the right thing and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it feels great and all that. To yeah, I, I take care of my family. I put my I, my daughter through college, who's now, you know, I, I made it out. That's right. When I came home, my daughter was eight years old. Okay. So I was a part of her life. So um, you've been there? Yeah, yeah. You know, Which the, is the, a great thing. Yeah, the first time I met my daughter, I was in prison. Okay. Um and, and and it's just different. Like even I wind up from school car, I wind up going to Fort Dix. Like it was always love for me. Like even even with our brother, Joe. I don't know if you noticed, know Joe went into the show in Fort Dix. Cause I was locked up with this other cat and he um I was locked up with this kid called A B. Good dude. He was down with Puffy at that time. He was doing a bit. He was Puffy's man. And um a matter of fact, now I believe if I'm not, I'm almost ninety percent. You know that comedian JB Smooth, mm -hmm. his manager. Okay, that's his manager. Little short dude, good dude. He came in, and he bought him Biggie, and at that time Biggie wasn't even the man. Right. At that time, Craig Mack was the man. Right. So Craig Mack, so you know that's what that the uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, yeah he, he was popping, yeah. He was popping. He was the, So then what happened? Talk, talk to me. So they came and did a show. I'm like, oh, shit, we could do that here? This is a four dicks, like I said, in the yard. Like, it was a low. He made that happen, so I called Joe. I'm like, yo, Joe, what's up? He's like, what's up? Me and Joe always been in contact. Me and Joe, um, you know, we childhood friends. Right. Before the music, like, that's when T.S. Terror Squad was a graffiti. Right. Like, we was drawn, you know. And then other stuff, but you know, anyway. So um, I call on like, yo, what's up? Nigga Puffy was up here with 
with Craig Mack and Biggie. He was like, where do you want me to come rep? I was like, yeah. I sent out paperwork. He came, finesse. Uh, he went in the, in, the, in the... How that felt to you, man? I mean, yo, I felt... Them. Yo, when I saw Joe... You know, coming in, perform. Yeah, I felt like mean? I was home. It felt good. It felt good. Cause, you know, the, the funny thing with that is, so right before I got locked up, that's when Joe was doing the Apollo. So I missed... Going there, he's he's starting to get his, his his music thing going, and we get locked up. So I missed, yeah, you missed supporting that. my brother. Like yeah. I just wanted to support, and so when I called him, like he never changed on me, and so when I made the call, he came in, and I thought they were, they dropped they put him in the yard with he was in the, he was in the yard with us. This was before he he caught his his situation, um. So he was able to get in there. He brought some people with him. And, and he performed. And to this day, motherfuckers that I was, if I put, niggas still talking about, like if I put a picture on IG, niggas is still talking about, yo, the show, the show. Hmm. Yo, he gave us all life that that's day. What, that's what's up. He, like, he, like, that's hell. Yeah. Motherfuckers course. can say whatever they want, Pete. That jail shit is for the birds, my nigga. That shit is whack. Mm-hmm. And that's why I understand, like, why. I see all these. That's why we got platforms like this. This is for the youth. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. This is this is this is for the youth, so we could bring that message for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, those that think that it's cool to be down and all that. You know yeah, what I'm this is the platform for that. You know what I'm saying, Billy? You know what us, Pete, and I, and excuse me, I'm gonna speak for you right now. But for us, so we came up, we came up poor, mm-hmm. poor families, and and I remember, like it was it was wild back then, but we did it. For survival to feed our families. Absolutely. I see the fucking the shit going on today. Niggas ain't making no sneaker money here. And and wildin'. I respect everybody and 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 I don't wanna get out of line and disrespect anybody like as far as that they out there the, hustling. The, the, the gang shit yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm like, so we was wildin', but I like to believe we was doing it for money. Mm-hmm. Motherfuckers is wilding out for nothing, for a rep, to put it on social media. Right. I'm like, that shit don't make no sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why I chose a different life. And, and like now, niggas just telling. And then out here, like nothing. It's a different era, different times. I don't it's, get it. It's okay, though. You know what? Cause all that shit, that, that shit, all come back and haunt them forever. Yo, I don't get it, my brother. You know brother. what I'm saying, Billy? So, you know, I'm just happy that you home. Yeah. You're doing the right thing, man. I want to, I want to thank you for coming for, to the show, man. You know what I mean? You know, it, it was, it was a pleasure having you, man. I you love you, man. Always, forever. I love forever. you too, man. And you did great, man. You know what I'm saying? Bye. Thank you for uh, coming through, man. Welcome back to Dog in the Yard with your boy Pistol P and my brother Boxing Dice. Right, um, left to the right, baby. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? Yo, sure. that interview, man, was a good interview, bro. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Billy Blanco. You already know. Coming through, showing that love. We appreciate having you, my brother. We love you up here. You know, this is that platform. Like, I keep saying it, you know, all the time. And I'm going to keep saying it. It's for, you know, it's that platform for the brothers that, you know, went through the system and, you know, and never had a voice. You know, and I'm happy that, you know, he was able to come through and, and, and share his experience with us, man. So shout out to, you know, to Billy Blanco, man. You already know, my brother, T.S. Yo, um, Pistol, let me tell you something. Uh, um, one thing about Billy, man, I, I knew Billy, you know, before I got locked up, when he was a young kid, that he was out there doing his thing, and he was always a humble little brother, man, you know what I'm saying? Good dude, you know what I'm saying? And look, he's he's out now, and he's the same dude. That, that's the good thing about him. He, don't, he never changed, you know what I'm saying? He never changed. So, you know, kudos to the brother, man, for, you know, doing good. You know, he's doing real good. He got a good job, got a good wife, you know, his, his, his daughter, you know, and stuff like that. All blessings to, to him, all, all top, all blessings to him and the family, man. And thank you for coming through, man. So with that being said, man, let's get straight to the um, third kite, that bonus kite. They asked me um, right. my relationship with Boy George. My relationship with Boy George is great. You know, I, I know George for tons of years. I mean, he's been in jail for, you know, half of his life. But I know, you know, me and George always been good. He's, my, he's a good friend of mine. And he introduced me everywhere he went as Pistol Pete. George didn't give a fuck who he was talking to or who was the caliber of a person. He'll be like, yo, by the way, this is my brother, Pistol Pete. 
And I'd be like, what up, you know, but that was his guy. You know, when he was out in the street, out in the world, doing his thing and all that, he was my man. I was one of his guys that he could actually confine in and um, actually, you know, take me places where he usually don't even take anybody else. That kind of shit, you know what I'm saying? Our relationship was super tight, and um, he's my brother, man. You know, um, you know, there's a lot of new things coming up, you know, and I'm definitely would, you know, glad to be a part of it. Um, you know, uh, shout out to you know everybody involved, you know, Efi Rara, you know, shit like that. Um, but you know, um, my relationship with Joe was always great, man. For those that keep asking me what's up with boy George, and you know, he's a legend from the Bronx and all that. You know, me and George was always great. Um, you know, like I said. George met me, I introduced him to the hood. I mean, right. the, the, the rest is history. We ain't going to get into details. You know, with that being said, I'm going to let Dice give you a little insight about that, about George himself, because he know George. Yeah, that's a fact. Nah, you know, like you said, you know, the brother, man, you know, he was from Castle Hill, you, you know, and, and, and we embraced him. You, you, you brought him around Cypress, I brought him around Brook, and we embraced him like family, and we got a lot of history, and we have a lot of good stories, too. We have a lot of good stories to tell about George, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm-hmm. you know, we was young. We was young, and we were just having fun out there, man. So, you know, if they want to know about it, they got to go to Patriot.com, man. Dog in the Yard. So, and they'll hear all the stories. they hear all about you go. it, man. There you, you know? go, guys. Listen, man. Um, with that being said, that was the bonus kike, third kike, you know, the boy George kike. You know, right. uh, nothing, like I said before, you know, we here. There's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of great things going on for George right now. I mean, right. a lot of big things. Um, brothers is doing, and um, hopefully you already know. I'm here for that. You know what I'm saying? Holla at me. You already know. It's your boy Pistol Pete, dog in the yard. Till next time. Box and dice, left to the right. Thank you.